everyone. Good afternoon, good evening. I welcome you today um, to Jesus Global Ecclesia, the church without walls. So today we are having a Holy Communion service um, whereby we shall be made to understand on the Holy Communion and um, how we can maximize the powers that are hidden in the Holy Communion. You know, many are the times that we look at Holy Communion and we want to have it only once in a year. You know, but Holy Communion can be had every day, can be had every week. We can provoke the powers that are in the Holy Communion for our own good. So today we are going to be made to understand that and uh, we know that we have to practice it on a daily basis or as and when we have to do it, you know, uh, which will maximize the results that we want to get uh, out of the, uh, the, the power of the Holy Communion. And I'm happy to announce that every, uh, at the end of every month, Sunday service, we're going to be having Holy Communion so that we can boost ourselves in the Holy Spirit um, in Jesus' name. So I'm, I'm sure everyone is going to be happy with that. We, we shall be having Holy Communion every uh, last Sunday of the month as a family. Um, so at this time, I want us all to pray for ourselves. Let us consecrate ourselves before the Lord so that we are ready for the teaching and we are ready for the Holy Communion. We have to present ourselves holy before the Lord in Jesus' name. So all right, let's bless our world today. Yeah. Glory to God. We're going to start this beautiful teaching. I don't know if the Holy Spirit is going to allow us to finish in one class. If not, then we have to proceed and turn this to another series of teaching. Glory. Matthew chapter 26 verse 28. Matthew chapter 26 from verse 28. We all know that the Holy Communion is not something new to many of us, but what may be new to some of us is how properly it should be done. And then the purpose, the entire purpose for which God created the miracle meal, as I used to call it, or you call it the covenant meal. It's either you call it the miracle meal or you call it the covenant meal. Biblically, it is called the table of the Lord. And then you may also be well to call it the covenant meal. Matthew 26 verse 28. Persuade, can you read for us? Yes. Matthew 26 verse 28. For this is my blood which is shed for you. What version have you read for us? I've read it Read NIV for us, please. NIV 38, covenant, which is brought out for many sins. Amen. You see, from the word go, the, the blood of Jesus Christ is what established the new covenant. The same story is found in Mark 14 verse 24 and he said unto them this is my blood of the new testament which is shed for many and Luke 22 from verse 19 to 20 and he took bread and gave thanks and break it and gave to them saying this is my body which is given for you these do in remembrance of me likewise also the cup after supper saying this cup is the new testament in my blood which is shared for you. So you can see the body and the blood was identified in this covenant meal, in this miracle meal, in this power meal. Glory to God. So whenever we whenever we take the Holy Communion, the Lord Jesus Christ says we should do it in remembrance of Him. And I'm going to show you shortly the meaning of the Holy Communion and where the word communion comes from because you won't find the word Holy Communion in the scripture, but you might find the word communion in the King James Version. So where did the Holy Communion, where, what does it really mean? And what do we benefit from the Holy Communion? Glory to God. So he said we should remember him. This is significant because these are the words of the Lord himself. That as often as we take the blood, as often as we take the bread, we are doing it in remembrance of him. Then the question is, what are we supposed to remember about him? The question is, who is he? <laughs> what are we to remember about him? We, we can remember that he's the savior, he's the healer, he's the baptizer, he's the coming king, he's the, he's the king of kings, he's the 
mediator of the new covenant he is the word made flesh he is our righteousness he is our sanctification he is the offering for our sin he is the, our advocate with the father he is resurrected king he is eternal life so there are so many things we can remember about him that is the bread of life so this goes back to say i am that i am what is it that you can remember about jesus christ what do you want to remember him for every time you take the holy communion then you must do it purposefully you must remember at least one thing about jesus christ are you getting what i'm talking about so now let me take you to one of my favorite scripture in first corinthians chapter 10 first corinthians chapter 10 thank you holy spirit we commit this to you first corinthians chapter 10 are you in first corinthians chapter 10 glory to jesus forevermore don't worry we are taking it slowly and steadily we are going to explode very soon foundation is very good thank you holy spirit thank you holy spirit thank you holy spirit first corinthians chapter 10 from verse 15, I speak as the wise men, judge ye what I say. The cup of blessing, mark the word, the cup of blessing, the cup of blessing. So when you take the Holy Communion, the blood that you are taking by faith, it's called the cup of blessing, all right? Jesus Christ said, when you do it, you do it in remembrance of him. And again, Paul the Apostle call it the cup of blessing. Wow, that's powerful. That means every blessing I need from God. Hear me very well, child of God. Every blessing I need from God, that you need from God, it's in the communion. It's called the cup of blessing. The body was broken for many, the blood was shed for many. The cup of blessing which we bless, is it not the communion of the blood of Christ? Child of God, open your eyes and see light. There is something that happens when you take the blood. There is a communication, communion. The word communion is from the word communication or commune. Something speaks. Every time you take the communion, you must take it because you want to provoke a voice, one of the voices of the blood of Jesus, according to Hebrews chapter 12, that speaks better things than the blood of Abel. There is a blessing you want to provoke when you take the communion. You don't just take the communion for religious purpose. You take the communion because you have understanding of how to overcome by the blood of the land and by the word of his testimony. And so when you take the communion, you are taking the communion to provoke one of the voices or all of the voices that the, <laughs> that the, that the blood speaks better than the blood of Abel. Are you with me, child of God? So the bread which we break, is it not the communion of the body of Christ. The bread which we break is it not the communion of the body of Christ. So the body also communicates certain things. <laughs> when you take the communion, you are provoking spiritual communication. Wow, that's beautiful. Isn't that great, somebody? Thank you, Holy Spirit. For we be many are one bread and one body, for we are all partakers of that one bread. Behold, Israel after the flesh are not they which eat of the sacrifice partakers of the altar what say i then that the idol is anything or what or that which is offered is in sacrifice so i don't know that's not what paul the apostle is saying but i say that the things which the gentile sacrifice they sacrifice to the devils and not to god and i would not that ye should have fellowship with the devils listen when you go to have communion fellowship with the devil you partake of devil's table when you come to the communion table you are fellowshipping with the lord and you are partaker of the grace of god you cannot drink the cup of the lord and the cup of the devil you can't be a christian at the same time outside christ doing whatever you feel like you cannot be partakers of the lord's table and of the devils do we provoke the lord to jealousy are we stronger than he so all that the apostle paul is giving us revelation insight here is that when we take the communion, we are taking the communion in fellowship. Every time we come into the communion table, we are in fellowship. And when we are in fellowship with Jesus Christ, He communicates to us. Glory to Jesus Christ forevermore. He communicates. There are certain things that is communicated with the blood. There are certain things He communicates with the body. And when you have revelation inside, you know when you come to the communion table, you have come to solution table, you have come to miracle table, you have come to endless life table, you have come to kill the devil. There are things that may have been difficult all along. When you come to the communion table, you come to report to the Lord and you provoke his response. There is nothing that cannot be answered at the communion table. There is no problem that cannot be solved at the communion table. Are you getting me, child of God? That's a very powerful foundation for you to understand that when we come to the 
table of the Lord, we come to solution, we come to blessing, we come to miracles, we come to signs and wonders, we come into personal fellowship with the Lord himself. We come to provoke the voice of his blood. We come to provoke the power of his broken body. Hallelujah. Do you understand? Amen. And when you come to the table of the Lord, you've come to spiritual portal. You've, <laughs> you've come to provoke certain things from the altar of heaven. Note again in verse 21, you cannot drink of the cup of the Lord and the cup of the devil at the same time. You either a child of God or you are not. Because, can I say this? I'm sure you are spiritual enough to handle this. Ooh, glory to God. Jesus gave us a natural phenomenon that has spiritual connotation. Just like water baptism is a physical thing, but in the realm of the spirit, it indicates your faith in the burial of Jesus Christ. So, when you take the Holy Communion, you also begin to provoke certain things by faith in the realm of the Spirit, which shows that you believe in the life, you believe in the death, you believe in the resurrection of Jesus Christ, and you believe in the power of God. When you take communion, you provoke the entire New Testament at the same time. <laughs> oh, I hope you are getting what I'm talking about today. Karabu zeketebru shahata. Ziki hihabo lahata. Kile the Holy Ghost, thank you. Lekozuka. Something begins to speak to you from the Lord. It means when you take the communion, you must hear what God is saying. There is a communication from God in this fellowship. There is a bonding between you and the Holy Ghost. Ooh. I'm careful to say this, but it's the truth. Holy communion is one of the rituals that we have as Christians. Just like speaking in tongues. Holy Communion is one of the command, the rituals that we have as Christians. Somebody will say, what is called rituals? Is ritual not for sinners? Rituals are not for sinners. Ritual simply means an act that you have to do in a particular way without missing it. For instance, I'm teaching you on how to ascend into the kingdom, into the, into the court of heaven, the protocols. Those are rituals. Things you must do accordingly to get a particular result is called rituals. So ritual is not a bad word. Glory to God. Just like the devil is trying to snatch rainbow from us, God said, I will put my bow in the sky. Rainbow belongs to God. And some people like LGBTQ are trying to claim rainbow as their property. Rainbow is our property. And I must announce to you ahead of time, our entertainment industry is going to use our rainbow for our logo. There is no devil that can take rainbow from us. Come on, say amen. Rainbow belongs to God. Rainbow doesn't belong to no devil. Thank you, Jesus. All right. So the Bible says it is broken. The body is broken. The body has been broken for us. And when you read from the word of God, that the Bible says in 1 Corinthians chapter 11, uh, uh, verse 24, and when he had given thanks, he break it and said, take it. This is my body, which is broken for you. This do in remembrance of me. Wow. His body was broken and we should remember the purpose for which the body was broken. Can I show you one quickly in Isaiah chapter 53? The Bible says he was wounded for our transgression. Wow. So when I'm taking the communion, I'm destroying sin. If there are besetting sins in your life, if there are certain things that are making you subject to sin. By the faith in the Holy Communion, you destroy the power and the root of sin. Holy Communion is a means by which you come to the altar of God in heaven and report cases on earth and get solution from there. Do you understand? He was wounded for our transgression. He was chastised. He was bruised for our iniquity. So the body was bruised. The body was wounded. Number one thing the body was, okay, Isaiah 53, follow me to Isaiah 53 quickly, everybody. We've got a long way to go today, no problem. In between, we're going to pray and we're going to receive the blessing of the Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Okay, Isaiah chapter 53. Isaiah 53. Isaiah 53. Lokazei la bahata bosh kahasa. Zile kebe huza anda kushki anda baskia. Verse 3. Okay, let's take it from verse 1. Who I believe are reports unto whom is the harm of the Lord revealed. For the, he, has, he shall grow up before him as a tender plant and as a root out of a dry ground. He had no form nor comeliness. He was so beaten that he lost his handsomeness. That is his body broken now. And when we, when we shall see him, there is no beauty that we should desire him. Because he lost his beauty, I must be beautiful. He lost his handsomeness, I must be handsome. He is despised and rejected of men, 
That means I can never be rejected. Whatever Jesus experienced, I cannot because he paid the price for me. A man of sorrow, because he had sorrow, I can never have sorrow. And acquainted with grief, because he was acquainted with grief, I can never have grief. So if you are grieving, there must be a problem because you lost consciousness of what Jesus has done. And we hid as our, as it were our faces from him, he was despised and we esteem him not. Verse 4, surely he had borne our griefs. Why should you grieve if Jesus has borne your griefs? He carried our sorrows. Wow. Okay. Ye, yet we did esteem him stricken, smitten of God, and afflicted. Man, the man Jesus was beaten, stricken, beaten. Then I know I can never be involved in an accident because he has all the accident on the way to to, to God. But but he was wounded for our transgression. What was wounded? The body was broken for my transgression. So I will remember what he, he went through on Calvary. Child of God, as we begin to go through this, you may suddenly find yourself in the courtroom of God because this is the way to God. Glory to God. The Holy Ghost can do anything in this in this atmosphere. So please be ready. Healings are going to take place. Deliverance of all kinds will take place. Surely it was in verse 5, but he was wounded for our transgression. He was bruised. What was bruised? The body also was bruised for our iniquities. So iniquity is unrighteousness in the heart. Transgression is unrighteousness in action. So the Jesus Christ's body took care of that. Do you understand what I'm talking about? I'm going to say it again. Iniquity is unrighteousness in the heart. Transgression is missing the mark, which is action of sin itself. And the body of Jesus was broken for that. Bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement of our peace was upon him. Now you will begin to understand what it means for his body to be broken. He was beaten. He was chastised. He was disciplined. Wow. So that I can have peace. So if you are not having peace, at the communion table is where you claim back your peace. So the communion table is a whole revelation of the life, the death, the power, the resurrection, and the soon coming of the Lord Jesus Christ. All together at once. <laughs> Do you understand, child of God? The chastisement of your peace was upon you. Who are those troubling you? The Bible says, see, it is a righteous thing for God to render affliction to them that troubles you. <laughs> Everyone troubling you today are going to receive affliction from God. In Jesus' name, glory to God. I'm trying to say something. The communion table is a table where you report the devil to God. You provoke affliction against the enemy. You, 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 you receive power to discipline and to afflict the kingdom of darkness. The communion table is the where you provoke all the angels of God to attend to your case, to your destiny, to your to, to the purpose of God for your life without fail. That's the power of the Holy Communion. The communion is the gathering of the whole assembly of the firstborn church. The communion is fellowship with heaven. here. <laughs> the communion is fellowship with the master himself. <laughs> Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, glory. This is, we're looking at how his body was broken. And the chastisement of our peace was upon him, Isaiah 53, verse 5. And with his stripes, we were healed. Because his body was broken, you can imagine how sickly Jesus became. Then you can never be sick. Are there sicknesses? They die at the community. Do you understand what I just, I'm not teaching you fables. I'm not talking rubbish. I'm telling you infallible word of God. At the communion table, claim your birthright from his broken body. We celebrate his blood, we forget his body was broken for these purposes. But he was wounded for our transgression, bruised for our iniquities, chastisement of our peace was upon him. With his stripes we were ill. All we like sheep have gone astray. We have turned everyone to his own way and the Lord had laid on him the iniquity of us all the iniquity of us all he was hung on the on the cross so that we can prosper there is prosperity at the communion table everything Jesus represents is at the communion table everything the New Testament established is at the communion table all the promises of God that are yea and amen they are at the communion table so when you come to the communion table with this understanding you are coming to power you are coming to miracle you are coming to deliverance I'm telling you child of God anyone insane will be delivered at the communion table <laughs> thank you Holy Ghost verse 7 says he was oppressed and he was afflicted yet he opened not his mouth all that Jesus went through was for your benefit 
Have you understood this right now? If you understood that, we can quickly go forward. Long way to go. Holy Spirit, thank you for establishing your word. Hebrews chapter 10 verse 20 says, By a new and living way which he had consecrated for us through the veil, that is to say, his flesh. So we approach God with peace, the word of partition that is between us and God has been broken down. You remember when he died, the Bible says there was a great earthquake and the veil of the temple was torn because Jesus became that veil. When his body was broken, it became the foundation to which we have access to God. So, and it, it by his body, it destroyed sin. He condemned sin, actually. You know, condemnation means condemnation. Sin was condemned by Jesus' body. When they were breaking his body, they thought they were disciplining him for nothing. Everything Jesus went through, every process has a spiritual significance. The Bible told us that <laughs> by his body being broken, sin became condemned. He laid down his life to condemn sin. Hallelujah. He gave the corruptible body to get the incorruptible one. Woo, glory to Jesus Christ. Lord, this is where you lift up your hands and say, Lord Jesus, I worship you. I thank you for all that you went through, all the price you paid because of your love for me. Hebrews chapter 2 verse 14 says, For as much then as the children are partakers of the flesh and blood, he also likewise took part of the same. Are you following me, child of God? He likewise took part of the same that through death, the death of the body, as the body without the spirit is dead. So he gave his body again. Hallelujah. Through death, he might destroy he that has the power of death, that is the devil. So by the breaking of his body to the losing of his life, shedding of his blood, he destroyed the devil. That destruction simply means every right that the devil has over you and on this earth has been stripped of him. Satan was destroyed. The Bible said that for this purpose, the Son of God was manifested that he might destroy the works of the devil. Listen carefully. The works of the devil has been destroyed. The devil himself has been destroyed. So what do you have left? And he did this with his body. He gave his life. He gave his body. And so when you come to the communion table, you announce the victory of Jesus Christ. Oh, glory to God forever. Man. Somebody is hearing me. It looks like Pesuit is the only one in church this morning. Zakozi kataba yihanda bazikete. Shakata. Mazu pre kusa vre ikazu katayela. Taki la basuke. Every power of the enemy humiliating your life till now. By this communion service, even before we begin to take the communion, they are letting you go on their home. Those troubles, those afflictions, are gone you will never see them anymore because the word of god is true because the word of god is true because the word of god is true because he died because his body was broken you can't be sick you can't be poor because he paid the price no more affliction no more diseases no more pain no more anguish you just need to go into your mind like i've taught you and begin to see this in reality you follow me to Jerusalem. You follow me as it goes to God Gotha. You follow me every step of the way and you see it. When you are able to see it, you claim your victory. Amen. That debt is, is, is cancelled. That money you owe has been cancelled. You will no longer be victimized. In the mighty name of Jesus, there is no generational causes that can stand the power of the victory of Jesus Christ. He paid the price. You hold devil nothing. You hold sickness nothing. You hold diseases nothing. He has paid it all. He has paid it all. Allow me to sing a song where God packaged me from in Africa. The meaning of that song is that Jesus paid all my debt. Those who are from that part of the world will appreciate this song. But I've told you the meaning. The meaning is that Jesus paid all my debt. Jesus paid all the debts that I hold. You owe God nothing. You hold Satan nothing. All debts paid, fully paid. And after he has paid, he made you an inheritor of God and a co-inheritor of himself. What does that mean? Everything God has now belongs to you. Everything Jesus has belongs to you. You are ruling and reigning together with Jesus everything god has belongs to you everything jesus now has belongs to what what manner of love the father has bestowed upon us 
that we should be called the sons of God. Can you imagine? After paying all our debts, he made us sons and daughters to God and says that everything God has now belongs to us. And what God gave him for the victory that he won for us, he gave it to us again. The Bible says God has given him a name that is above every other name. He gave us the name again, that in my name you cast out devil, in my name you heal the sick. So everything Jesus has belongs to us, everything God has belongs to us. So what is it that you lack? Nothing. All you need to do is to claim it by faith. And your faith simply means activating the word of God in your mind, being able to see what God says with your mind, believe it in your subconsciousness, speak it to reality, it's, it's all yours. Isn't this a simple life? Rather than suffering, rather than crying every day, rather than begging as if God is not your father, all you need to understand is the key of the kingdom. And then he promised to give us the key of the kingdom and that's what I'm sharing with you. He raised me so that you might understand that key for you to be able to put the devil where it belongs, under your feet. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. I like you to lift up your voice in gratitude. One minute. Just say, Lord, I thank you for paying all my debt. I thank you for setting me free. Rakola bahande keshika. Lekozu patahilaba. Lekozi. Listen. The death of Jesus Christ is not a story. <laughs> Amen. The death, the death of Jesus, the breaking of his body was not a story. The body of Jesus being broken was not a story. He going to the cross was not a story. It was a purposeful, predetermined agenda of God for your victory. Oh my goodness. When you say in Jesus' name, the whole hell shakes. When you say it with this understanding, the devil shudder. The Bible says the devil believes and trembles. So when you have this understanding, when you say Satan in Jesus' name, before you finish, he has disappeared. You cannot resist the devil without revelation because revelation is what gives you liberty. Do you understand, child of God? Yes, sir. Amen. Are you enjoying Jesus? Are you, are you enjoying Jesus this morning? So when you want to worship him, now you know the reason why you want to worship him. He told the woman of Samaria, you worship God, you don't know who you worship. We know who we worship. How can Jesus have done all of these things for you and you will, will you be worship, worshiping him with mouth? <laughs> you can't worship. When you have this understanding, you worship him in spirit and with the truth. You go before him and say, Lord, I thank you for what you've done in Isaiah 53. I want to worship you for every, every step of the way. By the time you are taking Isaiah chapter 53, verse by verse, you will spend one hour in worship. You will still not be done. Because there are a lot who says you don't know how to pray. This is how to pray. Glory to God. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Romans chapter 8, Romans chapter 8, verse 3 to 4. For what the law could not do in that it was weak through the flesh, God sending his own son in the likeness of sinful flesh. For sin, condemned sin in the flesh. Another revelation. Sin has been condemned. How can what is condemned be afflicting you? <laughs> This is why sin cannot have dominion over you. That's a defeated enemy. Sin has been condemned. And what is the condemnation? You have no more power over God's people. If any man be in Christ, is a new creature. All things have passed away. Behold, all things have become new. That's why he says sin shall not have dominion over you because he has been condemned. And the condemnation is anyone that is in Christ you dare not touch. No matter what you do, it has no power over them anymore. If you try to corrupt them, the blood of Jesus takes care of their past, present, and future sin. Wouldn't you give thanks to God again, child of God? Oh, 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 oh. The past, the present, and future sin has been taken care of by the same sacrifice. By one offering, he has perfected forever them that are sanctified. Listen, child of God, you are not righteous because you know how to do righteous. You are, you are righteous because Jesus became your righteousness. You are, not, you are not holy because you want to be holy. You are holy because Jesus became your holiness. Listen, he fulfilled all the law. This is what Jesus did. I want you to listen carefully. After fulfilling all the law, he said to God, I'm changing the covenant. There's a new covenant. From now, everyone that believes in me has fulfilled all the law. Everyone that called upon my name has fulfilled all the law. Nobody is guilty anymore before God. Did you hear what I'm saying? Amen. <laughs> so you tell that guilty conscience to go to hell because there is therefore now no condemnation for they who are in Christ Jesus, who walk not after the flesh, but after the spirit, 
Can I tell you another shocking revelation? The sacrifice of Jesus Christ of offering his life ended the rage of Adam. Ooh. I could spend the whole day doing this by the Holy Ghost. Can I shock you? You and I have no connection with Adam. We don't know that we don't know Adam. <laughs> 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 Can I share this with you? Do you want to learn this child of God? Yes. You don't, that you have no connection with Adam. That's why all those generational causes that are afflicting you, they are ignorance causes that is afflicting you. First Corinthians chapter 15 verse 45. And so it is written. Okay. Everybody, if you have a Bible, go there. First Corinthians 15 45. It is written. The first man, Adam. Listen carefully. Who is the first man? I'm coming to do this one. Adam was not the first man, part two. I've dealt with this. Because the first man Adam being spoken about here is talking about the first man in the renovation of the world. I'm sure you understand that. Because there was there was a there was a generation before Adam. So in this war that came out of water, standing in water, according to the book of First Peter, the first man that was created in the image of God called Adam. Because the men that were created before Adam were not in the image of God. Is somebody catching that revelation? The first man created in the image of God called Adam. Adam means product of the red soil. In the original Hebrew text, Adam means a product of red soil or a product from the ground. So the first man created in the image of God called Adam. Are you following me? So there were creations before Adam that were not created in the image of God. The first man Adam created in the image of God was made. Can somebody say was made? Was made. Listen carefully here. He didn't make himself. Somebody made him something. What did God make Adam? A living soul. How did God make him a living soul? He breathed into his nostril, Genesis chapter number one, and man, Adam, the man created in the image of God, became a living soul. Is, it, is that correct? correct? Now, he said, the last Adam. Woo! The last what? Adam. What? So there was a last Adam. Mm. So after him, there is no more Adam. Yeah. Who, who is listening to this? So stop calling Adam your father. Adam generation ended with Jesus. Because that's why Isaiah chapter 53 in the downward yeah. passage, who shall declare his generation. Jesus started a new generation. That's why he told his disciples, those of you who follow me in the time of regeneration, that is what it means to be reborn. That is what it means to be born again. Because Everyone in Christ is never part of Adam. Yes. You are a new creature. Amen. Did you get it? Wow. Amen. Amen. Who is catching this light? Yes, sir. Amen. Yeah. Amen. Amen. Yes. There was a first man created in the image of God called Adam. And in his generation, when they traced the generation of Jesus Christ, 14 generations from from Adam to Noah, whatever generation, generation, up to Adam. And Adam was called the son of God. What? Jesus was traced back to Adam and when they are going to call, the father of Adam was God. Adam, the son of God. What did God create in Adam? God did not create flesh and blood in Adam. God created a living soul. And that living soul is called the son of God. Adam recreated himself with unrighteousness and he got himself flesh and blood, a coat of skin. And God does not want flesh and blood because flesh and blood can never hear in the kingdom of God. Flesh and blood continues to remind God of the fall of man. And what did God do? He had to come in, his, in the same flesh and blood. God of heaven. You will understand this revelation as we go further. God has to come in the form of the same corrupted flesh because no man could save man. So it takes God himself to save man. He became a man to save man. This is where you will shout hallelujah to Jesus. Hallelujah. <laughs> he partook of the sin that he might save us. So he said when you are going through temptations, he's able to understand because he was there. And he's able to strengthen you to overcome. So the, the last Adam, the last Adam, I want you to see before I move forward. There was a first man, Adam, was made a living soul. And there is the last Adam. What was he made? He didn't make himself. He was also made. The first man was made a living soul. The last man was made what? A quickening spirit. Ooh, that's why Jesus told Nicodemus in John chapter 3. 
that he that is born of the flesh is flesh. <laughs> and that which is born of the spirit, Holy Spirit is a spirit. Wow. Listen. You are a different aspect. Do you understand what it means? Hey, even my being Christ is a new creature. Oh, it's a pass away. Yeah, 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 yeah. Stop it. Stop it. Pause and understand. You never existed on earth before you existed because you were existing in the mind of God. And you were existing in Christ. When you became born again, you became a new creature. Completely new. And that's why Apostle Paul would call the old person you know as the old man. The old affair was an old woman. She's old. He said, put on the new man, which is renewed after the knowledge of Christ. Amen. You are not the person that was given birth to by your mother, who she carried for nine months. The next time, your mother says, I bear you in my womb. Say, the person you bore was dead. <laughs> That's why I said, call no man your father in this world, because only one is your father, which is your father, which is in heaven. You are, you are, you, oh, Holy Spirit, give understanding to your children. <laughs> you are a new creature. Oh, man of God, are you saying we shouldn't support our prayer? That's not what the Bible is saying. You recognize them in the flesh. And you respect them and bless them according to the word of God. But when it comes to spiritual connectivity, you have no spiritual connection with them. As long as you continue to think that you have a spiritual connection, then the generational curses will be on you. That's it. Because you acknowledge with your mind and you say with your mouth. Your mother and your father, they are outside and your brother, they are looking for you. Your mother and your brothers are looking for you. They are outside. Your mother and your sisters, they are looking for you. They are outside. What did Jesus say? Who are my ma who, who is my mother and who are my brother? These people who does the will of God, they are my brother. My Bible never told me he went outside. But when he was on the cross, he transferred the motherhood to John. Glory to God. Hallelujah. When the mother came to him at the wedding of the Cana of Galilee, did he call her mother? He's still the mother, but Jesus was transiting between the spiritual identity and the physical identity he doesn't want to cause any confusion let the dead bury there he said woman my time is not yet come he didn't address mary as a mother there glory to jesus are you following me child of god Amen. john chapter 3 verse 8 the wind blowed where it listed and thou heareth the sound thereof but cannot tell whence it cometh and whither it goeth so is everyone that is born of the spirit you are now born of the holy ghost he that is begotten of god does not commit sin. first john chapter 3 verse 9 because the seed of god remains in him and he cannot sin because he's born of god there is no righteousness with god listen carefully that you can't sin again can i hear you say i cannot sin again until you believe that you continue to sin and when you continue to sin you are said to be carnal babe you are not growing the moment you gain power over sin because why should you continue to sin if Jesus has already destroyed sin? All have sinned, come short of the glory of God. Jesus came, paid the penalty of sin. So everyone in Christ, come back to the glory of God. We are back to the glory of God. We are back to the glory of God. The only challenge now is that who are your teachers? You are supposed to be taught. You are supposed to be taught to grow in the knowledge of God. All that you are doing here and the devil is helping you to achieve is to know God. He said this is life eternal that they might know God, the only true God, and Jesus Christ. Eternal life is the knowledge of God and Christ. First Corinthians chapter 15, verse 47. We have a long way to go, and I hope we will be able to go far today. Are you blessed? There are so many revelations by the Holy Ghost to show us step by step all the way. Glory to Jesus forevermore. Father, we bless your name. Father, we thank you. Father, we honor you. Father, we glorify you. Father, we thank you for that which you have done through the Lord Jesus for us. King Jesus, we worship you today. You are great, you are mighty. Thank you for your love for us. Holy Spirit, thank you for being here to execute the will of the Father. First Corinthians chapter 15, verse 47. This one will interest you again. Who is reading for us? Who has amplified? Le Kozopra Ilebesh. Verse 47, verse chapter 15, verse 47. Yes, please. The first man, Adam, is from the earth. The first man, Adam, is from the earth. Yes, please. A thing made of dust. The second man, Christ the Lord, is from heaven. Great. The first man, Adam, 
is from the dust of the earth. The Bible says, and God chased Adam out of the garden of Eden to till the ground from whence he was taken. <laughs> Hallelujah. Glory to God. It means Adam was made from the material from this world. So in the realm upon which your material was made becomes your habitation in the realm of the spirit. The earth is also a spiritual realm. That's why if you are made from celestial material, you will be able to see things in the realm that are lower than your realm of creation. For you to ascend into the realms of angels, they needed to give you access. <laughs> Holy Spirit. They need to give you access. In the same way, for angels to come to our realm, they need us to give them access. That's a revelation for another day. But now, you, I want you to see something. What did he tell you? The first man created in the image of God is of the earth and is earthly. The second man. Ooh. What did what did the Bible call Jesus the last the last Adam, right? Mm -hmm. So after ending Adam, he started a new generation. Oh God, you didn't get it. He became the second man made in the image of God. Oh. Amen. Who saw that? Amen. Who saw that? Okay, go back. Amen. Go back. Go back. Go back with me to 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 45. And so it is written, the first man Adam was made a living soul. The last Adam. He did not call him the last man. He is the last Adam that is made from the earthly material called dust. He was made a quickening spirit. So Jesus is not like Adam. There was something missing in Adam. This is why we appreciate there was a generation before Adam. Because Jesus became the perfection of what God actually intended in human. Look, the last man Adam was made a living soul. The last Adam. He didn't say the last man Adam. Because the, la the last Adam is not the last man. I'm going to say that again. Adam was the first man created in the image of God. And Jesus ended the generation of Adam. And from Jesus, a new generation started. A new, a new generation of men started with Jesus. Jesus started a new generation. That's why 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 47 is calling him what? The second man. Second man. What makes him the second man? There is something missing here. And it's called the second man created in the image and the likeness of God. Look, he, the Bible says he was declared to be the son of God like Adam was called the son of God. Jesus was declared was made, was declared to be the Son of God with power according to the spirit of holiness by resurrection from the dead. God said, this is my beloved Son. That's when God acknowledged him. This is my beloved Son in whom I am well pleased. Invariably, God cannot have two firstborn at the same time. Oh, you didn't get it. Oh, you didn't get it. <laughs> Zaki Zekuti. Jesus is the first fruit. He's the firstborn from the dead. He's our firstborn. He's the first begotten of God. When did God begot him? If God already begot Adam. It means the Adam generation ended in the spirit. A new generation of man started with Jesus Christ. That's why Jesus became the firstborn. Who, did this? Who got that? Who got this deep thing? Child, a child. Who understood this revelation? Because once you understand this, you disable the devil completely and every right Satan has over all the children that are still connected to Adam, he has not, he doesn't have over you anymore. And that's why we are commanded to go tell them. And that is the good news. The good news is what I'm sharing with you right now. The good news is that the generation of Adam ended, the generation of sin ended, a new generation of righteousness began and that the first man of that generation is Jesus Christ. Amen. Do you not know why he is the firstborn? <laughs> he is the firstborn from the dead. From which dead? The death of Adamic generation. All of us died. All of us have died. I, Jesus helped us to understand. The first man is of the earth. Earthly. The second man. The second man that is created in the image of God. Who is the firstborn of the new generation? Who is he? Is the Lord from heaven. Is the Lord from heaven. <laughs> he chose to be another Adam to end Adam. To start his own generation. So we are in another generation. You can call it the third generation of humanity. Which is the perfect generation of humanity. By the normal, no, numer numerology of God. By the numbering of God. Three is the completion circle. There will be no other human generation after this because this is the perfect evolution of man. Those who are 
trying to understand what the evolution of man is. There was a man not created in the image of God. There was a man created in the image of God that became perfect. And there was a man that started a perfect generation of man, what God originally intended man to be. First Corinthians chapter 15 verse 49. And as we are born the image of the earthy, we shall also bear the image of the heavenly. What is he saying? You have nothing to do with Adam anymore. <laughs> right. Who understood the word of God? The same way you were a sinner and you were doomed to go to hell is the same way you are no longer a sinner. You are, you are sentenced to eternity of blessedness. Genesis 2 verse 7. And the Lord God formed man. Which man? The first man created in his own image. Out of the ground, Adam, and breathed into his nostril and the bread of life and man became a living soul but the last adam was made a quickening spirit he that is born of the spirit is spirit he that is born of the flesh is flesh we are no longer born of the flesh we are now born of the spirit we may still be in this tabernacle it's a requirement for us to accomplish god's purpose for us on earth and that includes sharing the good news with everyone who is still connected to Adam to tell them that Adam's generation ended by Jesus. He paid all the price. What are we discussing? We are looking at understanding and maximizing the Holy Communion. And we are laying powerful foundation for this. All right? 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 17. If any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. You never existed on earth. What does new creature mean? Newly created. A brand new vehicle, new model. Mercedes 200 of 20 years ago cannot be compared to Mercedes 270 of today. You are a new model. You are a rebranded. <laughs> that's why it's called rebirth. And that's why Jesus was telling Nicodemus, you are, a master, you are a teacher in history. You mean you don't understand what it means to be born again. And he asked him a question you should ask. Is it that a man will go back to his mother's womb? Jesus Christ said, I'm telling you the things of the earth you don't understand. What if I tell you the things of the heaven? He said, unless a man be born again, reborn, rebirth, regenerated he cannot see the kingdom of god shall a man enter his, his mother's womb again he said you don't understand this is a spiritual womb this new bird is not like it's not like the earthly adam i've started a new generation let me show you how jesus gave back on the day of ascension he looked at his disciple and the bible said he breathed into them Ooh, receive ye the holy ghost <laughs> that was the beginning of his generation the same way god breathed unto into the nostril of adam jesus breathed upon the disciple and said i give back to my generation from here upon this revelation i will build my generation receive you the holy ghost they became born of the spirit that is what it's called quickening spirit and that's why as many that are led by the spirit of god not led by their soul led by the spirit of god not a man that is controlled by his soul like adam led by the spirit of god the man that has access to god process through his soul to enforce the will of god on earth are the sons of god it's the type of manifestation of the sons of god do you even know what you are talking about when you talk about the manifestations of the sons of god we are talking about the manifestation of those who understand what I'm saying and who walk in the consciousness and are dominating with this revelation. You have no connection with Adam. The next time you say, in, in iniquity did my mother born me, you are lying. You just lied. <laughs> if you are born again, if you are born again and your husband is born again and when you marry your husband is born again and both of you are born again, living a righteous life, whatever you will conceive in your womb shall be called the son of God. Holy. Because there is no unrighteousness in you. Oh, you don't get it. Who caught that? Jesus. Jesus, my Lord. You can't be born again and your husband born again and you give, you conceive a child and say that child come out as a sinner. It is a lie. Amen. Because Adam began to give back in his own image. Now you have become the image of the quickening spirit. You will be conceiving and giving back in the image of Christ. Who? No, they don't get this. Who got this? I, I, I told you today there are so many revelations to crack. So two hours may not even be enough. Are you here with me? So many things we suffer. Hey, did he not tell you that they are not of this world as I am not? Oh, come on. Who, who is here today? You are not from here. When you became born again, a miracle happened. You died, you resurrected, you went to your country. Heaven. 
And from there you are dispatched back immediately. It's a spiritual mystery down to hell as a missionary for God. To either rule as a political administrator, to dominate as a professional or career excellent person, or to maximize the glory of God in the business world, or as a woman to help God raise your children to fulfill destiny and support your husband to fulfill destiny. Or you become a frontliner as a gospel minister. These are the five areas God has sent each and every one of us on earth after being saved because the bible says we are his workmanship created in christ jesus <laughs> sons and daughters you were never here <laughs> oh hallelujah you are a new creature all things have passed away unless the bible is not true which is true all things has become new you still look the same in the flesh, yes. You still have the same memory, yes. God needs it. But the real you has been formatted. Your conscience has been poured. Galatians chapter 6 verse 15. For in Christ Jesus, neither circumcision availed anything, nor uncircumcision. But what, what is the big deal in Christ Jesus? A new creature. It doesn't matter whether you're a Chinese, whether you're an African, whether you're an in Indonesian, American, all those things doesn't matter. What matter is what? New creature. This outer package is just a package. The real product is inside. Ephesians chapter 2 verse 10, for we are his workmanship created in Christ Jesus unto good works which God has before ordained that we should walk in them. God does not relate with us correlating to Adam ever. Their sins and iniquities will I remember no more. Everyone in Christ has never sinned. Oh, he didn't hear that. <laughs> Are you hearing me, child of God? Get, get that stupid condemnation out of your heart. Everyone in Christ has never seen. When God looks at you, he sees the righteousness of God, of Christ in you. When God looks at you, even when you have messed up, God looks at you and the advocate with the Father takes care of it and says, He's learning. He's learning to grow. Zakuria Mahande Bosika. I've told you many times the letters written to the churches. They were not written to sinners, they were written to Christians. And they were admonishing them, stop being envious, stop being jealous. Those letters were not written to sinners. Those letters were written to people that have confessed the Lord as their Savior. Am I correct? And they were being called canners. Canner believers, babies. When you fail to grow in the things of God, you will look like a sinner. But in the original context that God looks at you, you are not. As long as your conscience is with God, all those guilty conscience you feel, all those inner witness and conviction of the Holy Ghost, they are part of the process that Apostle Peter says, we are all partaker of his fatherhood discipline, so that we can measure up to his perfection in holiness. As long as your heart is willing to do the will of God, you will keep rising. And that's why I say if you faint in the days of adversity, your strength is small. Don't see yourself as a sinner ever again. See yourself as someone learning the ways of God. But when you willingly now go sin, then that's where the problem is. Because sin cannot have dominion over you. You allow it. Even at that, you still come back crying in penitent, godly sorrow leads to repentance. You will be cleansed as if you never sinned. And they will look for that sin and you will never see them again. One man blessed me with his testimony. I heard it testimony some times ago. And uh, the, 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 Jesus appeared to his son in dream. And I think at the dinner table or somewhere, the son said, Dad, I saw Jesus last night. The father said, really? He said, yes, Dad. Oh, now the father wanted to find out whether he was seeing Jesus or something else. He said, he said next time he shows up, ask him what was the last sin Dad committed. <laughs> Hallelujah. Glory to Jesus. So Jesus came the following night and uh, whichever night he showed up and when he was about to leave the young boy said hey jesus dad told me to ask you what was the last sin he committed and jesus sighed trying to remember and jesus christ said i can't remember you can't remember he said yes so later the boy was narrating to the father the father smiled and said you saw jesus because the, your sins and iniquities will he remember no more Amen. <laughs> When an angel appears to you and you are wondering whether it is an angel or God, whether in the dream, save this one and save it in your subconsciousness. You will need it. The Bible says the angel of darkness do manifest as angel of light. How do you prove that you have seen a true angel of God? You want to ask them, who is Jesus? The Bible says the spirit of Antichrist will not acknowledge Jesus as being he came in the flesh, he died, he resurrected. Ask that angel appearing to you that, who is Jesus? Is Jesus the Son of God? Is Jesus the Christ? 
is Jesus the living word. Ask that manifested angel. The inhibits of the devil, he will disappear. If it's an angel of God, he will give you a lecture. Matthew chapter 19, verse 28. What are we looking at? We are, you know, some people say things because other people are saying it. They don't have the revelation behind what they are saying, so they can't say it for long. Pastor David Sin, I'm happy to see you on board tonight, like this morning. God bless you. Thank you for showing up, sir. And my daughter, Joel, I, I celebrate you, man of God. Pastor David, thank you for joining us this morning. Are you blessed, sir? Welcome, sir. It's a pleasure. It's a pleasure, sir. Yeah, are you getting blessed, Pastor David, sir? Yes, yes sir. It's a pleasure. When, when giant killers are hearing these kind of things, I'm excited because they will leave this place to go and kill the giants in their ministries. <laughs> All right. Thank you, Jesus. Excellent Father, we bless your name. Thank you, Lord. Okay, let's continue from where we, we stop. Titus chapter number 3, verse 5. Not by the works of righteousness which we have done, but according to his mercy he saved us by the washing of regeneration. Regeneration and the renewing of the Holy Ghost. We were regenerated. When you are regenerated, it means you were taken back to source and you were renewed. And so God took you back to creation room and remade you. <laughs> Jesus Christ said, you that are following me in these days of regeneration, let me show you the word of Jesus Christ so that you will be able to appreciate. You shall know the truth and the truth shall make you free. Truth doesn't set free, truth makes free. Matthew 19, 28, and Jesus said unto them, verily I say unto you, that ye which have followed me, in the regeneration that tells you jesus knew what he came to start the second man regeneration he regeneration mankind he regenerated mankind Ooh, hallelujah to jesus this is beautiful come on say i'm regenerated say i am regenerated okay now second thessalonians chapter 2 verse 2 to 4 let's deal with the devil now Let's deal with the devil. Let's, let's, let me show you some of the fears of the devil. I'm, I'm coming to teach a whole series on that, on the fears of the devil. But let me teach you some of the fears of the devil. 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, verse 2 to 4. That ye may not soon shake him in mind or be troubled, neither by spirit. Don't let any devil deceive you. <laughs> and don't let your mind deceive you. The Bible says the heart of a man is deceitful above all things, desperately wicked. So both of them are, are your enemy. And he said, let that he be not so shaken in mind or be troubled, neither by spirit, nor by word, nor by letters as from us, as that the day of Christ is at hand. Let no man deceive you by any means. For that day shall not come, except there come a falling away first. Oh, a lot of things to say. God give me strength. The falling away here is talking about the apostasy. And the apostasy here is total rebellion against God. And by the time this is happening, ooh, the reign of the Antichrist. We will not be here. After now, that is when the day of the Lord, because the day of the Lord uh, the, is the day of the vengeance of the day of judgment. It's called a day, but it's not a single day, so to say. When I teach you on the chronicles of the end times, we'll be able to delve deeper into this. Except there be a falling away first. There must be a falling away. And that man of sin be revealed. In the last day, iniquity shall abound. The love of many shall wash cold. Men shall be ungrateful. Those are preparation towards the days of the Antichrist, which is seven year period. And I'm going to say something very technical here, but I know because you have been a good student of the Bible, you will understand. Who is this man of sin? It's called the man of sin. Ooh, glory. The son of perdition, the same name that Judas was given by Jesus Christ. So the Antichrist and Judas are the same spirit because he was opposing Christ. Who opposes and exalted it himself? above all that is called God. Does this sound like the statement of the devil in the book of Isaiah and in the book of Ezekiel that he will raise his throne above God and be like the most high and he wants the same worship? All that is worship so that he as God seated in the temple of God showing himself that he is God. Can I bless you here, child of God? Are you ready to receive what is coming? Yes, sir. <laughs> the devil wants imagined that he would ascend and take his throne far above God. He, he wants imagined to be like God. God is going to give him that opportunity to manifest it for seven years. <laughs> I will say more than that. Whatsoever you can imagine, conceive, 
universe will deliver it to you. But in this regard, because it is impossible for the devil to achieve that dream of his, in the kingdom of God, he still will be able to be given an opportunity to achieve it before he's thrown finally to hell. That is why the thought of foolishness is saying, that is why whatever you are able to imagine and conceive, good or bad, you will see it in reality. It's only a matter of time. It is the law of the universe. Every angel you see that are faithful to God in heaven, chose to. God is forcing none of them. After Lucifer, a few others have misbehaved. They are put in chains. So the Antichrist is a, is a person, is a man. And I'm going to show you again who this Antichrist is. You see, he's a man of sin. His mission is to oppose. He is going to present himself as the son of the devil. The same way Jesus Christ is presented as the son of God. All that the devil wants to do is to mimic the kingdom of God. Are you hearing what I'm talking about? Yes, the Antichrist is called the man of sin. And please, this guy is a man. And he will make sure he is a man because he wants to mimic Jesus, God in a man. So the devil also wants to sit as God. He will say he has given back to his son who is a full man. And there is a false prophet that is representing the Holy Ghost in his kingdom. This, this is Bible. So, in every generation, Satan has become somebody that is going to stand as Antichrist, including today. And at an almost point to you who the Antichrist of this generation is, if the rapture takes place today, who will be the next Antichrist? I can, I can almost immediately point him to you, because he's all over the place right now, doing exactly the same thing the Antichrist is coming to do in mega status. And I know, whether you believe this or not, that COVID-19 for the last two, three years was a devil. Kozaki <laughs> Ato Was what somebody? That was a devil to see how it's going to really happen when it is happening. And that goes to tell you that the devil can smell the kitchen. <laughs> Hallelujah. Karabazo Prahila. So the man Antichrist will be fully possessed by the devil, the same way the devil entered Judas. And Satan will be in complete control, total control of his soul. It will be, this person is going to be a world political stroke religious man. He's a man, eh? but he's going to be fully religious so that he can capture the mind of the children of Israel because the children of Israel has a critical role to play in the seven years of great tribulation. Details when we deal with this matter. And so, because the devil knows this, according to the Bible, this man will be a global religious figure and he will be portraying the unity of global religion. Do you know him now? <laughs> Who can see the Antichrist of our generation? Do you know the person I'm talking about? He will be going around the world to ensure peace between Palestinians and the Israelites, the Arabians and the Jews. Karato Sikatada, Shekuze Kedia. He will go around and say they are brothers and let there be peace in the world. He will portray to be a man of peace because Jesus was the Prince of Peace. And after three and a half years, he will show his true color. Leko Zakadi. There is an image in the United Nations now. I won't say much. Find out yourself. We will deal with this matter extensively very soon as God will allow us. Glory to God. And the job of the first prophet is to be promoting the Antichrist. You find answers to this in the book of Revelation chapter 16 verse 13. Revelation chapter 19 verse 20. Revelation chapter 20 verse 10. He's also called the son of perdition. And so the Antichrist, 2 Thessalonians chapter 2 verse 7, follow me quickly, is called the mystery of iniquity. Why? Because Jesus was the, is the mystery of godliness. <laughs> Are you seeing the devil, right? Yes, sir. Why is the Antichrist the mystery of iniquity? Because in Jesus Christ dwelleth the fullness of the Godhead bodily, Inside the Antichrist will be dwelling the devil fully. Second Thessalonians chapter 2, verse 7. What are we discussing? We are discussing understanding and maximizing the Holy Communion. And we need to go fast now. For the mystery of iniquity thought already work. Even in the days of Apostle Paul, the Antichrist was there. Only he who now let it will let until he be taken out of the way. And the he who is letting is us. As long as the church is here, even if you don't believe you are a Christian, as long as you see me alive here, then you know that the Antichrist has not come. He hasn't been revealed. And that's why I was very upset during the COVID saga. I have to write a book, 
COVID-19 vaccine is not the mark of the beast. Beast, I can never be. <laughs> when you know the word of God, you will, you will not be deceived by the lies of the devil. And that's the job of minister, that the children are no longer tossed to and fro by every wind of doctrine and slight of men. Deliver those children from ignorance. I will give you pastor after my heart who shall feed you with knowledge and understanding. Shout hallelujah. So the manifestation of the sons of God are these things that are preventing the man of sin. When you see the Antichrist, everything about him, 100% is sin. Just like everything you, about Jesus Christ, 100% is righteousness. The, there is no righteousness you can find in the Antichrist. Number three, the devil's manifestation also has defined himself as the mystery of iniquity. And he is a complete opposite of Jesus Christ. First Timothy chapter 3 verse 16 talks about the mystery of godliness. And I quickly want to show you that God manifests in the flesh, justified in the spirit, sin of angels, preach on unto the Gentile, believe on in the world, receive up to glory. The devil will replicate all this. Instead of justification in the spirit, he will be condemned in the spirit. All right? The devil will fuel the Antichrist. It is a man of perdition. He's a son of the devil, just like Jesus is the son of God. What am I saying? That's it. Everything Jesus represents is what the Antichrist will try to represent in the opposite. Hallelujah. The Bible told us in 1st 2nd Thessalonians chapter 2 verse 6 again that we are the one preventing the Antichrist from being revealed. So, but how do you really know the spirit of the Antichrist? Let's go into the scripture quickly. 1st John chapter 2 verse 22 to 23. Man of God, how is this related to the blood of Jesus? You will soon see. Why the communion is very important, you will soon see. 1st John chapter 2 verse 22 to 23. Who is a liar? But he that denies that Jesus Christ, Jesus is the Christ. Excuse me, ladies and gentlemen. Are you with me? If you are with me, say amen. amen. The Bible says, Who is a liar? Whosoever denies that Jesus is the Christ. And who is the Christ? The anointed one. Who is the anointed one? The Son of God. Who is the Son of God? The Word made flesh. Who is the Word made flesh? Jesus Christ. God in flesh and who is God in flesh the one who died who resurrected who ascended now the bible says there is a spirit that is permanently and constantly against the truth i just defined to you and he said that spirit is called the spirit of antichrist he is antichrist that denies the father and the son whosoever denies the son the same as not the father and he has not acknowledge the son and he that acknowledge the son has the father also there's a religion in the world they will tell you god does not have a son and god cannot give birth do you know that religion god does not have a son so that tells you where the antichrist is likely to come from there is a, a, a global religion in the world their greatest message is god does not have a son and <laughs> he cannot give birth you know that Yes, sir. So it's a lying spirit. The spirit of Antichrist is a lying spirit because the devil is a liar from the beginning and he is the father of it. What does he do? He denies Christ. Why is the Antichrist so particular about Jesus not coming in the flesh? The spirit of the Antichrist is forever saying Jesus did not come in the flesh. Jesus, God never came in the Why? Why? Today you will find out. Because the revelation of Christ, God in the flesh, is the foundation of the Ecclesia. Because the not, because you remember upon this rock I will build my church and my ecclesia and the gates of hell shall not prevail so as long as the devil is able to portray to the world that god does not have a son god never had a son then he will be prevailing against the church the, you know the highest opposition against the church is this particular religion and where i was packaged by god before sent to the world the only message they have is against christian have you noticed they, are, they don't have any other message but against Christianity. That's the spirit of Antichrist. Because salvation comes through, through the knowledge and acknowledgement that Jesus Christ is Lord, isn't it? If you shall confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you shall be saved. Because that is the foundation of salvation. And I thank the Lord for what God is doing right now because I was sharing with one of my daughters recently that many people have sincere heart where they are, even in Catholics or in some other religion, they think they are serving the real God. And because God looks into the heart, God is visiting people in those religions now. In Islam, in Buddha, in every religion. And people are getting saved. Come and give God glory for that. Your prayers are being answered. Amen. Amen. People are seeking for the true God. And those who are seeking for the true God in, in wrong religion, God 
is visiting them. And mind you, Christianity is not a religion. And if you want to make Christianity a religion, God has told you how to be religious. Hallelujah. Visit the fatherless, support the widow, do charity, then you'll be religious. <laughs> Praise God. Hallelujah. In the days of Jesus Christ, that same spirit said Jesus Christ was casting out devil by spirit of Beelzebub. When Jesus was resurrected, that spirit went to give the soldiers money that they should lie that his, his, his disciple came to steal him. Lie, 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 lie. Wherever you see lie, the devil is there. That's why nobody will make it to the new Jerusalem with a singular lie. There shall in no wise enter into it whatsoever worketh abomination or make it a lie. Sister liar. Brother liar, you know, man of God, it's not really a lie, you know, it's just some white lie. Whether blue, green, red, purple lie, all liars shall have their parts in the lakes which burn it with fire and brimstone. That's what my Bible says. That Christianity that does not take lie from your mouth is sending you to the bottomless, to the pit of hell. And I'm not missing my word about that. Mr. Preacher, who is a liar, hell is waiting. So the spirit of Antichrist says Jesus never died. Jesus never even came. <laughs> First John chapter 2 verse 18. Little children, it is the last time. And ye have heard that Antichrist shall come. Even now are there many Antichrists. Can you see in the days of Paul there were many Antichrists. Whereby we know that it is the last time. First John 4 chapter 3. And every spirit that confesses that that confesses not that Jesus Christ has come in the flesh is not of God. And this is that spirit of Antichrist, whereof ye have heard that it should come. And even now, already it is in the world. Can you see that for 2,000 years, the devil was already preparing for rapture? <laughs> oh, hallelujah. Second John chapter 1, verse 7, that, that tells you he doesn't know the accuracy of the agenda of God. And as a result, he's doing his best to be ready at every time. For many deceivers are entered into the world. 2 John chapter 1, verse 7. Who confess not that Jesus Christ has come in the flesh? This is a deceiver and an antichrist. How do you know the highest demonic onslaught? Lie. I preached a message in 2004. I guess the title of that message is The Easiest Sin. Lie. So you now see how many Christians are going to hell unless they repent. Lie. You lie over business. You lie to your children. You lie even to yourself. <laughs> you can't be a child of God and you have affinity for lies. You lie to your husband, you lie to your boyfriend, you lie to your mom friend, you lie, you even lie to your bed. Then you <laughs> glory to God. The greatest message of the Antichrist is Jesus Christ never came in the flesh. Now you begin to appreciate the greatest message of the Holy Communion is to counteract this lie. Oh, you didn't get it. I'm showing you the lies and the whole essence of the Holy Communion. So that when you are taking the Holy Communion, you understand the purpose for which you are taking the Holy Communion. God never became a man. That is the spirit of Antichrist, which means the Antichrist spirit, which is Jesus never died. Jesus never shed his blood. If he never came, he, made, he never died, he never lived, he never shed his blood, let alone him resurrected. So that is the gospel, that is the message, not gospel, that's the gospel, bad news is bad school. Of the, of the Antichrist. So the Holy Communion, therefore, is the spiritual weapon, activity, that works against all the lies of the Antichrist. And Jesus Christ said, as often as we take the Communion, we proclaim, that is, we preach his death until he comes. It's a commandment for us to be preaching that he died. And when you say he died, you terrorize the kingdom of darkness. Are you following me? Are you still here? Where are my people? Glory to God. Are you still understanding what I'm talking about? Amen. Thank you, Jesus. So, when the Lord Jesus was giving us this tool, this covenant meal recipe, this powerful miracle covenant meal called the Holy Communion, He specifically told us that whenever we do it, we are doing something mysterious. We are proclaiming His death until He comes. And we are declaring that He came, He conquered the devil, He resurrected, He died, he resurrected, he went to hell, he destroyed the gates of hell, he, he went to heaven, he, he, he claimed back the ownership of the world. That is what we do when we take the Holy Communion. When we take the Holy Communion, we overhaul the whole New Testament and we provoke all the angels of heaven at once. Do you understand? Amen. And when we take the Holy Communion, we subdue the spirit of Antichrist completely, without doubt. We subdue all the powers of darkness because the greatest fear of the devil, 
the greatest fear of the devil is the understanding that Jesus Christ came in the flesh. There are a whole lot inside it. Because when you know, then he is doomed. And when we take the Holy Communion, we announce in the realm of the Spirit that Jesus ended the generation of Adam and he defeated the devil. He conquered sin. He destroyed sin. He, he overpowered death. He won all the victory. He has a name that is above every other name. These are the things we provoke when we take the Holy Communion. Do you understand? So the Holy Communion service, therefore, done accordingly, is a spiritual reminder and conscious renewal of our faith in the new covenant. Karuba Rakise Belobuska. So when we are taking the Holy Communion, we immediately create spiritual portal for ascension and descension of angels. We provoke all the better promises in the New Covenant for manifestation. Hebrews 8 6 says, But now are he obtained more excellent ministry, by how much also is a mediator of the better covenant, which was established upon better promises. Hebrews 12 verse 24 says, And to Jesus, the mediator of the New Covenant, and unto the blood of sprinkling that speaks better things than the blood of Abel. Second Peter chapter 1 verse 4 says, We have by and given unto us exceeding great and precious promises that by this you might be partakers of the divine nation, nature, having escaped the corruption that is in the world through lust. So we provoke the fulfillment of God's part of the new covenant established through the blood of Jesus Christ. We declare the defeat of the gate of hell. We announce the defeat of the devil. These and many more are the power that are hidden in the Holy Communion. And ooh, we are getting closer to the big, 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 bigger deal. Revelation 12 verse 10 says, And I heard a voice, a loud voice saying in heaven, Now is come salvation and strength and kingdom of our God and the power of his Christ. For the accuser of our brethren is cast down, which accused them before our God day and night. I've taught you this, there is, there is no accuser in the court of heaven again. Jesus has cast him out. After the resurrection, the devil lost access to heaven permanently. He can't ascend anymore. Do you understand? That's why we make sure you don't ascend because he knows what goes on there. So when the sons of God were gathering in the Old Testament and the devil was gathering with them, it was because he held the title deeds of the world. He did that. Adam delivered it to him. And he told Jesus to his face and Jesus didn't do anything because he knew he was going to get it legitimately. When he paid the price of his life and his blood, he, the kingdoms of this world became the kingdom of our God and he handed it over to us to govern, to establish the colony of heaven on hell. And Satan was cast out of heaven. There was war in heaven and Michael and his angel waged war against the devil and his dragon. Imagine the whole hell went to heaven to fight and there was no more place for them. And woe to the inhabitants of the earth because the devil has come down upon them with a great rod, knowing that he has a, but a short time. But that short time is more than 2,000 years now. But in God's counting, his long suffering is very patient to make sure that many of the sons of Adam will become sons of Jesus Christ. Verse 11 is what is interesting to me here. And they overcame by the blood of the Lamb. Say with me, I come by the blood of the Lamb. Say that, that the devil is in trouble because of the blood of Jesus Christ. I wish I had the time to break that word this way tonight. Glory to Jesus. It is so clear. And they overcame by the sword of the Spirit and by the blood. They overcame by the testimony of Jesus Christ, which is the spirit of prophecy. This is the reason why the devil will not want you to share testimony of what God has done because he knows you are confirming that he died, he resurrected, all power belongs to him. And you don't partner with the devil by hiding testimonies. <laughs> you see, may I say this, when, when you hide testimony, you hide the glory of God. And why do you think he will do another one? And why would you think that the recurrence of this thing that God has dealt with coming back might not be because you partner with the devil, you deny him his glory? No, no testimony is too small, child of God. Do you know how you value testimony? You value testimony by looking at what if God has not done it, it will tell you the value of that testimony. Stop denying God glory. No testimony is ever too small. You are shy. And no matter what me, I'm shy, yo. I can't share my test. I don't want people to know that it's me. Oh, when the devil is afflicting you and the whole world is seeing your affliction, you are poor, you are barren, you have no husband, they saw you that time. When they are carrying you from hospital to hospital, you were not shy, they saw you. Now that God has changed your situation, I don't want people to know, ah, hey, <laughs> no comment. <laughs> 
Mazoka. Tell them that Pastor David said no comment. Keep on hiding testimony, right? No comment. And they overcame by the blood of the Lamb and by the word of their testimony. And they loved not their life unto death. Therefore rejoice ye heavens and ye that dwell in them. Woe to the inhabitants of the earth and of the sea. For the devils is come up down unto you, having great wrath, because he knoweth that he had but a short time. Hallelujah. Glory to Jesus forevermore. Romans chapter 3 verse 25, whom God has set forth to be propitiation for true faith in his blood, to declare his righteousness for the remission of sin. So the blood of Jesus Christ, how do we overcome by the blood? Faith in the blood of Jesus Christ delivers to us all the promises of the New Testament. Your understanding of the blood and your faith in the blood and knowledge of what the blood does guarantees you all the blessings of the New Testament. All of them. <laughs> the blood has done so much for us. Romans 8, 3 says, What the law could not do, God said in his own son, I was able to execute it in the flesh. Hallelujah. Hebrews 10, 14 says, For by one offering, he has perfected forever them that are sanctified. Second Corinthians chapter 5, verse 21 says, For he had made him to be sin for us, who knew no sin, that we might be made the righteousness of God in him. <laughs> Romans 8, 37 will say, Nay, in all these things we are more than conquerors through him that loved us. God commended his love towards us that while we are yet sinner, Christ died for the ungodly. Hallelujah. Let me begin to draw the curtain to allow us to take the communion as I begin to show you certain scriptures. If I'm not able to finish it, we will finish this some other time, but you have gotten the basic understanding. Romans chapter 5 from verse 5 to 8 says, And hope make it not ashamed, because he, the love of God is shed abroad in our hearts by the Holy Ghost, which is given unto us. For when we were yet without strength, in due time Christ died for the ungodly. For scarcely for a righteous man will one die, yet prevention for a good man one would even dare to die. But God commended his love towards us in that while we are yet sinner, Christ died for us. The, the blood of Jesus Christ, which is the life of Jesus Christ. I've said something there. I, won't, I don't have time to break it down, but we'll come back to it. Amen. The blood of Jesus Christ, which is the life of Jesus Christ. The life of Jesus Christ, which is the blood of Jesus Christ. <laughs> that tells you why the devil is so particular, but he never came, he never died, he never resurrected. It is not the physical blood that we are talking about. It is talking about what represents blood in the realm of the spirit. Hallelujah. Kare kosikata. The blood of Abel, your brother, I hear the voice of the blood of Abel. So blood have got voices. Ooh, blood will be required from those who kill innocent blood, right? And those who kill innocent blood will not be pardoned by God. This is one of the reasons why the devil is eternally guilty of the blood of Jesus Christ. Which means he's guilty of the life of Jesus Christ, terminating the life of Jesus Christ. Ooh, glory to God. First John 3, 16. Hereby perceive with the love of God, because he laid down his life. For us, we ought to lay down our life for the brethren. Are you able to lay down your life for the brethren? First Peter chapter 2, verse 24. He himself bore our sins. Where? In his body. On the tree that we might die to sin. You see what I'm talking about? You can't be a Christian and have affinity for sin and live to righteousness. By his wounds we have been healed. Our faith in his blood which is his life laid down. Faith in his blood, which is his life laid down, is our continual victory over the devil. We demonstrate this faith through the Holy Communion. Having understood the foundation, you now know why you take the Holy Communion. It's to kill the devil. <laughs> Hallelujah. Come and say with me, to kill, it, to kill the devil. The Holy Communion will practically kill him. To kill, you render him impotent. I wish I have time. But let me show you something that will make you afraid. First Corinthians chapter 11. I want to make you afraid. And in this fear is the fear of God. First Corinthians 11. First Corinthians 11. Holy Spirit, as I show your children these, let the fear of God grip them. Karo fazile feko shop the heart. Ziko to boko shikata. Zakoze etabosa. First Corinthians 11. Are you there? Verse 29. Amen. Verse 20. Verse 23. For I have received of the Lord that which also I deliver unto you. This is a very significant statement from Apostle Paul because he said everything he teaches, the Lord himself taught him. So Jesus Christ also gave him the ritual of the Holy Communion. And I'm, I'm, I'm very confident calling it a ritual. Let your mind receive it because you're afraid of people who does ritual. You also start doing your own rituals in Christ. <laughs> if they call you Jesus Christ, 
it's okay as long as you are getting a result. Hallelujah. Don't allow the devil whatever you want to call it, as long as you get result by faith. I receive of the Lord that which I delivered unto you, that the Lord Jesus, the same night in which he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, Take it, this is my body, which is broken for you. This do in remembrance of me. After the same manner also he took the cup, when he had sought, saying, This cup is the New Testament in my blood, which this do ye as often as ye do, do it in remembrance of me. The blood of Jesus Christ is the signature and the seal that commits God to fulfill his part of the new covenant. Did you hear what I'm saying? The blood. When Jesus gave his life, God becomes automatically, inevitably committed to heal you, to prosper you, to bound up your broken heart, to lift you, as long as the kingdom is your priority. God can never change his mind over what is written in the new covenant. And to make sure of that, Jesus ascended to heaven in the courtroom of heaven to watch God, whether God will say no to any of them. Then he will say, look at my heart, look at my nerves, I died. That's the job Jesus is doing, to continually remind God, we have, a, we have a deal, we have a deal that cannot be broken. We have an agreement. You don't understand. Sister Yabisi has broken all the rules. She has come to fornicate. But Lord, according to the agreement we had, Father, before I went to give my life, I said if Yabisi will confess her sins. You are just and faithful to forgive her all her sins. God said, oh yeah, yeah, I remember, okay, yeah. All right, so he's, she's clear. Let me see his holy. Do you understand? For as often as ye eat the bread and drink the cup, what do you do, everybody? Ye do show the Lord's death till he comes. Every time you take the communion, you are announcing to the universe, he came, he lived, he died, he resurrected. All power belongs to him. Satan under my feet, the will of God be done. The kingdom of this world has become the kingdom of our God. I can never be sick anymore. I can never be poor. I can never fail. That's what you do at the communion table. You kill the devil at the communion table. <laughs> Wherefore, verse 27, but there is a problem. Whosoever shall eat this bread and drink this cup of the Lord unworthily, shall be guilty of the body and of the blood of the Lord Jesus. There is sin against God, there is sin against the Holy Ghost, there is sin against Christ, and there is sin against your body. The sin against Christ is anything you do that makes a brother or a sister fall, or you work against the body of Christ. Disunity, hatred, unforgiveness to a brother or a sister. These are some of the sins that you commit against Christ. They are forgivable sins, but when it comes to you, Taking the Holy Communion, not discerning the body of Christ. Some of you will die. Some of you will be sick and not be healed. That's what the Bible says here. Let's read the word of God. This will make you afraid to quickly go and forgive that brother or that sister. Some of you sit down in the, in, in, in the body of Christ and gossiping other ministers. That's why your prayers are not answered. <laughs> Glory to God. All right, listen, verse 28. But let a man examine himself, and so let him eat of that bread and drink of that cup. You see, this is our ritual. Do people just go to a witches and wizard society one day and start eating whatever they are eating there? No. You must be in the right order. You must have fulfilled certain conditions. In the same vein with Jesus communion, you can't just wake up one day and say you want to start eating communion without you having fulfilled the requirement. Are you walking in the unity of the spirit? Are you walking against the body of Christ? For he that eats and drink unworthily has eaten and drank damnation to themselves, not discerning the, the Lord's body. The body of Christ is holy. You cannot be talking rubbish about the body of Christ. And many preachers are guilty of this. I don't even know what is happening in the body of Christ. We are going nowhere. Shut your mouth. Never say any negative things about the body of Christ. Speak positive. Be careful what you say about a brother in Christ or a church. Be very careful. For this cause, many are weak, sickly among you, and many sleep. I thank God he didn't say they, they go to hell, they slept, they went to heaven before their time. So that brother that died last week, that you are wondering, oh God, you are not being faithful. 
Do you know what he has used his mouth to say about the body of Christ? Didn't God say he wanted to kill Moses on the way even after he had sent him? Because he needed to circumcise his, his children. He wasn't going to do it because of Zipporah. God is not going to compromise his standard for you. The blood of Jesus Christ has not reduced the holiness of God. Ne? For if we would judge ourselves, we should not be judged. Let me stop here and then um, begin to show you some other things, some other time as we prepare to take the communion. Are you ready for the communion? If you don't want to eat damnation to yourself, walk in love. The communion is a spiritual meal that preaches the love of God. It is at the communion table you become Christian again, in case you have backslidden. <laughs> it's a very powerful table. It is at the communion table you walk in forgiveness, in case you don't want to forgive. <laughs> Glory to God. Because your prayer will not be answered. The Bible says in 1 John 2, 11, that he that hated his brother who is walking in darkness. Hating your brother according to 1 John 3, 15 makes you a murderer. And you know that no murderer is going to enter into the kingdom of God. You are supposed to walk in love. This is one of the benefits of the Holy Communion. As the Holy Communion is a weapon of killing the devil, it's also a weapon of making your life right with God. Hallelujah. Matthew 5, 23 to 25 tells us a very beautiful um, uh, principles of the kingdom of God that says, if you are bringing your gift to the altar, for instance, you are a preacher or you are a singer or you serve in any capacity in the house of God like persuade and Sifiso, they lead prayers, they do this or do that. If they have, if they remember that they shall have something against them, whatever they are doing in the house of God is not, is not accepted. Mark you, they are not the one that offended her. She has something against them, which they might not even know or they know. If they don't resolve that issue, whatever they are doing in the house of God, the giving, the service, it's, un, it's unacceptable. The Bible says, you remember your brother has something against you. Leave there your gift before the altar and go your way because you can't create spiritual water with discord. A similar story is told according to the constitution of the kingdom in Mark 11, 25, that whenever you are praying, start to pray, you forgive. Hallelujah. Do you understand? In Matthew chapter 10, the Bible says a similar story. At the same time came the disciple to, unto Jesus saying, Who is the greatest in the kingdom of God? And Jesus called a little child unto him and set him in the midst of them and said, Verily I say unto you, except ye be converted and become as a little child, ye shall not enter into the kingdom of heaven. Whosoever therefore shall humble himself as this little child, the same is greatest in the kingdom of heaven. Mark the requirement. And whosoever shall receive one of such little child in my name, receive me. And whosoever shall offend one of these little ones which believes in me, it were better for him that a millstone were hanged on his neck and they were drowned in the deep of the sea. Tell your enemy to be careful. Take it therefore that you despise not any of these little ones, for I say unto you that in heaven their angels do always behold the face of my Father which is in heaven. Moreover, if your brother shall trespass against you, now you know that this brother offended you. Go and tell him his fault between the two of you first of all. It shall be, if he shall hear you, you shall gain your brother. But if he will not hear you, then take with you two more, that in the mouth of two or three witnesses every truth, every word may be established. And, he shall, and if he shall neglect to hear you, tell it to the elder of the church ecclesia. But if he neglect to hear the ecclesia, he is a sinner, he is not a member of the kingdom of God, reckon to him, let him be unto you as a hidden man and a publican. After that, whatsoever you bind on that shall be binding in heaven, whatsoever you lose on that shall be loose in heaven. So now this is you. You have many unforgiveness in your heart. You have many bitterness, you have envy, you have jealousy, and you are in, you are shaking like a like a shaken leaf. Ah, whatever I ban on that is ban there. Whatever I lose on that is there. Nothing is happening. Check this requirement. <laughs> Praise God. So the Holy Communion is a life-giving meal. As I close with John chapter 6, verse 34 to 36, then said Jesus un unto them, then said they unto Jesus, Lord, evermore give us this bread. And Jesus said unto them, I am the bread of life. He that cometh to me shall never hunger. And he that believeth on me shall never thirst. But I say unto you that ye also have seen me and believe not. The Jews then murmured at him because he said, I am the bread which came down from heaven. We have two fundamental spiritual meals. 
the word of God and Holy Communion. When you are taking the Holy Communion, you will always be a fortified Christian. You will not be weak and you will receive the power of resurrection. Verse 42, when they said it is, when they said, is it not this Jesus, the son of Joseph, whose father and mother we know? How is it then that he said, I came down from heaven? And he said, I am that bread of life. Your father did eat manna in the wilderness and are dead. I am the living bread which came down from heaven. If any man eat of this bread, he shall live forever. Can you see that? Verse 50 said, this is the bread which come down from heaven that a man shall eat thereof and not die. When you take the Holy Communion, which symbolizes Jesus Christ, he's talking about the word of God relative to the Holy Communion here. You shall not die. And listen to what, what one of the things that, one of the things that excite me most, Holy Spirit help me. <laughs> I am the living bread, verse 51, that came down from heaven. If any man eat of this bread, he shall live forever. And the bread that I will give is my flesh, which I will give to, to, for the life of the world. Can you see that? He's talking about his flesh. When we take the Holy Communion, we are fulfilling this scripture. Hallelujah. The Jews therefore strove among themselves, saying, How can this man give us his flesh to eat? Then Jesus said unto them, Verily, verily, I say unto you, Listen, listen, child of God, this is going to be about my last statement before the communion. Except you eat the flesh of the Son of Man, except you drink the blood of the Son of Man, you don't have life in you. Whoever eats my flesh and drinks my blood, have eternal life. And I will raise him up on the last day. For my flesh is the original meat, and my blood is the original drink. He that eats my flesh and drinks my blood dwells with me. Can you see the connection again? And I in him. The Holy Communion unites you with Christ. As the living Father had sent me, I live by the Father. So he that eateth me, even he shall live by me. This is that bread which came down from heaven, not as your fathers did eat manna and are dead. He that eats of this bread shall live forever. This is also signifying the tree of life. Hallelujah. Let's jump to verse 62. What and if ye shall see the Son of Man ascend up where he came from. I don't want to go into that. Glory to Jesus. If you have your representation of the blood of Jesus with you and the representation of the bread with you, I like to pray right now. Because the Bible says the blood of Jesus speaks better things and I've tried to explain this to you. So the faith is yours now to use as you take the bread. Father, I pray in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, wherever you are, take a piece of your bread no matter how small it is. I bless this bread, Father, in Jesus' name all over the world. I bless their bread, I bless the bread, I, I turn it to the mysterious body of Christ, I bless the cup. Father, as they take this bread and they take this cup tonight, this morning, this afternoon, wherever they may be, let the covenant of the New Testament be activated on their behalf. Let everything that you signed in the New Covenant to do to your children, by their faith in the blood of Jesus, be activated in the name of God the Father, in the name of God the Son, in the name of God the Holy Ghost. Every work of the devil in your life, in your destiny, in your home, in your family, in your body, that the blood of Jesus already signed again. Again, let the voice and the spirit from the altar where this blood was offered be provoked to your favor today and let the devil be subdued in the mighty name of Jesus Christ and let God be glorified. Let, let God be glorified as the miracles begin to happen and you return with testimonies in the mighty name of Jesus. If you are taking this on behalf of anybody, that which you desire, the spirit and the voice of the blood of Jesus will go forth and speak to that situation. Let the voice you desire from the blood of Jesus be provoked to speak to your admission, to speak to your job, job hunting, to speak to your elevation, speak to your business, speak peace over your life, speak blessing over your life in the name of Jesus Christ. Father, we thank you because it's done in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. You may take the bread, take the body of Christ right now, and take the blood. I've told you, you can use anything whatsoever. You take the bread and you take the cup. And once you have taken the bread and you've taken the cup, you need to begin to give thanks to the Lord. And then we expect miracles hereafter. Hallelujah to Jesus. Glory to God. After you've taken the bread, after you've taken the cup, 
begin to give thanks to the Lord. It's done. The miracle is done. Hallelujah. You may not see the wind. You may not see the cloud. Your valley is filled with water now. The miracle is done. You will begin to testify. No more prayer needs to be done. The prayer is activated. Angels are released now. Blessings are coming your way. Glory is going to God. The devil is on the flight. <laughs> Woo! I can see demons disappearing. Glory to Jesus. I can see the devil in your situation fleeing. I see angels at war because of your faith in the blood. Glory to Jesus Christ forevermore. Hallelujah. Thank you. Testimonies are coming in Jesus' name. Give thanks to God. Give thanks to God. Thank you for your time. Awesome. It's a long walk to freedom with a package of depths and truth. I will leave the floor for our mother in the house to take it off from there. Thank you very much. I believe every one of us have made a decision and a 